Hello everyone, this is Ben with ERP Connect Consulting, and in the next 10 minutes, we're gonna go through anything and everything you need to know about navigation within Business Central. So let's get started. The first thing we're gonna look at is the header and the favorites versus the search functionality. So the first thing you're gonna to need to do to begin using Business Central is find the areas in the system that you wanna work with, right? So maybe I'm on the customer service side and I wanna see customers. It would make sense that I've got customers in my favorites bar up here, in which case I can just go ahead and click on, it's gonna bring me to my customers and I can click on this company name at the top here at any time to get back to my homepage. So that's gonna be the first way. If it's in your favorite bar, obviously you can just click on it. It's gonna take you there. If you don't see it, you can click on these drop downs, and it's gonna give you some additional uh, options that you can choose from. So you can see I have different options in finance, cash management, sales, et cetera. But if you don't see what you're looking for in any of these options, and you also don't see it in the full list here, what you can do is come up to the search bar and type in, maybe you wanna see the sales order, if I type in sales order, it's gonna give me a handful of different options here, right? So I've got my pages and tasks, my reports and analysis, app source, and documentation. So the pages and tasks, when we're searching, you can see that I've got three here. If I click this show all, it's gonna give me more options. You'll see this throughout the system pretty much everywhere. Uh, what this is gonna give me for pages and tasks is things like master data, uh, any lists of, of data, whether it's master data or transactional data, as well as tasks. So things that you're gonna be doing within the system. Maybe you're entering a sales order or sales invoice. Maybe you're receiving a purchase order or just interacting with purchase orders. All of that kind of stuff that you're gonna be updating and transacting with and editing and posting. Anything like that you can find in the pages and tasks up here. Then we come down to the reports and analysis, kind of like the name indicates. This is gonna be read only type of data where you're clicking on something and it's asking you for filters and various different fields that you're looking for. Then you're gonna print it or send it somewhere, maybe a PDF or you can schedule it to be sent or you wanna preview it, right? So if I come back up here to my sales order, the difference between the pages and tasks and reports and analysis basically are, you're gonna actually be updating these things and playing with them on a day-to-day -day basis. Reports and analysis, you're just gonna be entering in filters and then printing the data or previewing the data and sending it off to someone in a read only manner. The next thing we have is app source. So this is gonna be all your third party ISV tools, anything that's being used to extend the system. We have a handful of these ourselves that we sell currently, basically to increase productivity, increase ease of use uh, within Business Central. And all of this is extending the uh, internal code base within Business Central. And they're all additions to the core functionality of the system. And then finally, we have documentation, which we'll get deeper into here in a second. But the last thing that I wanna show on the search is if I need this and I wanna see this all the time, I can click this bookmark here. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna now save it in my header here. And what I'd recommend is anything you're using quite frequently, make sure you favorite. It's gonna show up here. Then you don't have to search for it every time. However, if you ever do need something, you can always search for that. The next thing I wanna mention is these options are all gonna be based on my role center here. So you can see that I'm a business manager. That's what I've assigned myself. Uh, note that roles and security uh, are not synonymous. So the role is just kind of the basic layout of your homepage and what you're gonna see. You can see a bunch of different roles here. If I click accountant, that's gonna give me general kind of like finance type things, um, aging, stuff like that, that a typical accountant's gonna wanna see, chart of accounts, general ledger, all that good stuff. But if I don't have the accounting or any sort of accounting uh, permissions, this uh, role is pretty much gonna be useless. So just because you have the role doesn't mean you have the permissions, something I always like to point out and mention. And again, the way I got there is just come up to this gear, click my settings, and then you'll be able to jump into the role. The next thing is the company. If you ever need to switch companies, just go ahead and click these three dots. It's gonna allow you to jump into a different company. And then the work date, this should just typically be today's date. It's the date that's gonna default on all of your transactions. So that's a little bit to start with basic navigation, talked about how to get places, whether you're using the header or the search bar. The next thing we'll wanna talk about is filters and saved views. So I'm gonna come into my customers here Again, I just clicked on the header. You could also search for it. Uh, what I'm gonna wanna do here is filter my list. So in this case, maybe let's say we wanna filter the balance. 
I can come up here, click balance. I can, of course, do uh, sending or descending. But what I want to do here is a filter. If I click filter, it's going to give me a blank filter. If I click filter to this value, it's actually going to give me just that value in my filter over here on the left. But in this case, I just want to do a greater than zero. I want to create a list that gives me all of my customers that have an open balance currently. So by putting that filter on the list, uh, I can see all of that data. If I want to go one level further, I can put a multi filter on here. Maybe I want to click on this 30 day and click filter to this value. Now I've got a multi filter on one list. This is my customer. I'm going to kill this one for a second so that I can get back to everything open. The next important thing to note is that you can save these views. So if I click save, what this is going to do is allow me to go customers with open balance. And now I've got that saved here. So anytime I come in, I can click all. It's going to give me everything. I can click customers with open balance. And that's going to give me the saved view that I just created. So there's a ton of different things we can use in these filters. Uh, one of the things that I mentioned earlier was documentation. If I ever come out to this question mark and go to Microsoft Docs, this is going to bring me documentation of the page I'm on. So in this case, we're talking about adding new customers and creating customer cards. But one thing that I like to show, and I will definitely put this in the notes down below on the video, is this sorting, searching, and filtering uh, page or document by Microsoft. As we're on the topic of filtering, this gives us a ton of reference and a ton of different things that we can do to easily find our data, right? So uh, whether it's case sensitive or you want the uh, data to start or end with a certain word, right? In this case, we're looking at wild cards. We're looking at the at sign for case sensitivity, uh, things like that, right? So these are all good things to look at when we're creating filters. Uh, as we continue to scroll down, there's a ton of different things like the intervals. These are going to be super useful when you're looking for ranges. So you can see uh, in between range, uh, no bottom bound, but we have a top bound up to including. Uh, we have a starting but no ending, things like that. We've got a pipe for an either or, not equals to greater than, some self-explanatory things there. Um, some of these down here are very useful. We can do an exact match. So you want it to match exactly with what's in the quotes, the case sensitivity with the at sign, uh, the indefinite number of characters. So if we put the star at the beginning of the end, it's going to search for anything that contains those letters. Uh, a question mark is going to give us an unknown character. If we don't know how to spell Hansen in this case, it might be with an E, might be with an O. We can use the question mark and just showing kind of how you can combine those expressions uh, within the various filters. So I'll attach this. This is one of the most useful documents that I typically find when trying to build these filters out. And it's a huge time saver when building filters and also saving those views. So we've talked both about the saved views and the filters here. The next thing, if we come back up to uh, our settings here, we have this personalized button. We already talked about everything in my settings. I've got a whole nother video on personalizations. I will drop that link down below as well. Uh, whole, whole video on personalizations. Uh, again, just a quick overview of personalization. It's going to allow you to drag things, move things around, uh, take things out. We can hide them um, and also add new fields uh, into the window that we're on. So again, I'll put that link there. Um, and then the last thing that I want to talk about, right, is um, this help and support. So when you go into help and support, if you're trying to troubleshoot maybe any technical issues, anything like that, or you wanna see uh, what the data looks like uh, in the full table. We can look at last known errors. We can look at inspect pages and data. Uh, this is just gonna kind of give us a full look behind the scenes of what table I'm on, what page I'm on, uh, all the data points behind the scenes. I can search for this, for example. So if I type in associates, it's gonna show me that my name and my search name both have that record in there. Uh, if there's any ins extensions installed in the page, um, as well as any page filters, which we can see here. So just a few things as we get started. Again, if I click on this, it's going to bring me back to my home page at all times. Talked about the role centers, talked about the searching, kind of how to get around the system, talked about personalization, save views, uh, and finally the help section and the documentation, not only for the filters like we touched, but everything else in the system. So that's it for today. Hopefully you liked the video. Please leave a comment if there's anything else you'd like to see in our next video. And as always, thanks for tuning in and listening today.